Okay, I think I will slowly start. Okay, I see people, many people from Berlin. So I think a lot of developers there. Uh, so we are almost 50 people and uh, okay, it's two minutes. So I will slowly start. Um, I will first present myself, um, uh, myself and Tibor. So we are uh, both developers from the Sonar Source company. Oh, now we uh, call it Sonar. And uh, we are both developers of the uh, JavaScript analyzers. Uh, and today we will be speaking about uh, how you can use uh, the products developed by Sonar for bringing code quality and security into your project uh, CI. Uh, we will see this um, with uh, Sonar Cloud and Sonar Lint. I'm not sure if you heard of, this pro of these products, but definitely you will learn about it soon. Uh, we have some prerequisites for this workshop. Uh, so the GitHub is uh, account on GitHub is a must. Um, so if you don't have one, please create it now. VS Code is also a must. Um, you can download it right now. It's uh, super quick, just uh, the file. Uh, you need also Node and Yarn. This is not super essential, but that's nice to have. And then the rest is uh, you need to have some basic understanding of how Git is working, how JavaScript language is working, because that's what we will be looking at and how the continuous integration is working. Uh, so, Okay, I see that there is already some chat. So Tibor, feel free to ping me if there is some questions which needs to be answered aloud. Ravi is asking if we have job openings in Europe. So we do. Definitely, <laughs> we, definitely we do. I will share the I will share the link. Yeah, guys, we have uh, many openings. So feel free to apply. Great work, great place to, to be working. Uh, so if there is no questions about prerequisites, um, we can, um, I will show you the plan. So uh, let's say it's one hour and a half, but that's, let's say a rough estimation. Maybe it will be faster. It depends on how things are going. Um, so here's the plan. I will not just go for over it, but you have understanding that there will be eight, let's say models. Each model is a baby step on setting up the, the pipe uh, of your quality, of your project quality analysis. And we will go one by one. I will, I will stop sharing these uh, slides, I mean, on the screen, um, and I will just show you what to do. I will send these uh, slides to you, Tibor. Can you do that? Can you send the link? To, the, um, to these slides in the chat. So the best will yes. be if you, um, if you have these slides open on your computer and in case you are a bit lost, what to do, uh, you can always open them and see um, what to do because there will be basically the, the instructions I will follow. Uh, okay, so uh, now, Let's start slowly with the um, with the products which are which we're gonna discuss today. So Sonar is a company uh, which provides with the um, code quality tools. Um, this is let's say ecosystem. SonarLint is an extension for the IDE, which gives you instant feedback while you're coding. Uh, SonarCube is a self-managed tool, so you will need to host it yourself. And Sonar Cloud is a, a cloud-based um, tool which is hosted by Sonar. So you just buy a subscription there, or it is free for open-source projects, and you just use it. 
So today for the simplicity, we will use on a cloud, for, of course, so that we don't need to take care of um, uh, setting up the sonar cube. <coughs> um, so let's start. Um, I hope everybody managed to open those slides uh, because I'm going to stop sharing them. And um, I will ask you in the, in the next, next uh, uh, slide, on the slide number six, there is a link. So this is, um, I have it open already. Okay. That's uh, the, the fork of the simple small project. This is a project from MDN. I forked it and I changed it a tiny bit to have it more appropriate for our uh, purposes. So could you please now fork this repository to your organization? So you have this fork button over here. I will not do it because I have already my fork and you please do this. So you fork it into your under your organization where you have admin rights. Um, and so you press here and you should see your organization here and you press on it. So um, as soon as you have forked it, please open it. So you should see your, I don't know, John slash to do react. Uh, and now you should, uh, you can uh, clone this project locally. Uh, you can copy the SSH uh, link to it, and you can uh, clone the repository locally with uh, git clone uh, and insert this link. So I just have my some empty directory which I created for our workshop called DevOps.js, and uh, I just clone it in there. You know, guys, I was so rushed to start that I forgot to do something. Okay, while it is cloning, I will start and I will create a poll. So I created a small poll for you with just three small questions. Uh, I am just starting it now. So that would be great if you can uh, answer them. That's just... Uh, so one question is about uh, if you heard of these products before. Another one, what are you doing? What is your role to understand like who is here on this uh, workshop? And the last one is, are you just watching or you really cloning and you want to do the stuff? Uh, so what is your plan today? Okay, I see that uh, some people want to do the whole workshop. That's great. I hope that you will succeed. I hope everybody who will who started it will do it. But if you're just watching, that's also great. Uh, I believe that's already a good beginning to consider it uh, adding into your project. Okay, so we have like not everybody yet answer it, so I will wait for a bit more. And how is it going with the clone? Did everybody work and clone? No problems there. Uh, okay, I don't see anybody saying anything is wrong, so I consider this is good. Okay, I think that uh, everybody answered who wanted. So I will share results uh, with you. So you see that um, there are some people who already using it. That's great. Uh, I hope that you will still learn something new because we are adding new features um, every month. Uh, there are people who just heard of it. So that's a great opportunity for you to learn a bit more. There are 30%, almost 30% who never heard of it. That's a bit sad, but uh, we will fix it. So we are here mostly developers. That's great. And some of DevOps. And 60% uh, want to accomplish their workshop. Great. So let's continue. 
<clears throat> so we have cloned the wrapper. Uh, now uh, let's uh, go to VS Code. So VS Code is one of the IDs which is supported by SonarLint. Uh, I picked it up because it's the most common ID for the uh, JavaScript development. Uh, also JetBrains IDs are supported, Eclipse, Visual Studio, I think that's it. So um, let's open our project into this. Uh, okay, I'll just use the menu here. Uh, open folder and I will open this project here. So uh, let's open the file source. Uh, I don't know why I got full again. Um, so uh, let's open the file source slash app. So this will be the file we will be focusing on today. So you might ignore the rest. So that's a simple React project, which uh, does the addition of to-do items. So your I know, daily tasks or whatever. Uh, so it's a small demo project. Uh, based on uh, used with Yarn. Uh, so you can install Yarn dependencies uh, while it's not in fact so much required now. Um, and now let's um, uh, install the SoonerLint extension. So in this uh, extensions tab in VS Code, uh, where, where this uh, square, four squares, uh, you can just type SonarLint and it's on the top and you will click on the install button. And it is installing and here it is. And so, and instantly we are getting some underlying, underlined code. So this is uh, Sonderlin telling us that uh, there are some problems in the code or things to improve for the maintainability purposes. Uh, for example, there is a commented code here, which is um, might be confusing for, for maintainers. Uh, here you have a import from React two times, so you can merge these uh, imports to be more con concise. Etc. So we have different issues here. In the VS Code at the bottom, you have this um, warning tab, and you uh, uh, a participant requests last leave transcription be enabled for the meeting. Lera, are you here? Uh, can you tell me? There is somebody who asks for leave transcription. Is it? Is it okay if I enable it? I'll try. It should okay, be enabled, I'm not yeah. sure. Okay. So now I see, and probably everybody sees at the bottom what I'm saying. It's a bit weird, but okay. So um, where are I? So I was uh, saying you that at the bottom uh, in this tab, you see the SonarLint uh, reporting you the problems in the code. Um, so uh, there are warnings and okay, I'm not sure what is this uh, icon meaning. Okay, and I hope everybody managed to have SonarLint running. Uh, if not, uh, please share the problem. All right, Java, mm, I forgot about it. Yeah, yeah, sorry guys, I didn't think about it. When I, I, was Lena, I, I think it's okay. I mean, I will read the chat, so don't, okay. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, I just wanted to make sure like it's okay to go on. Uh, so maybe Tibor, you can tell me if there is no, it's all good, I can go on. Uh, so um, in SonarLint, uh, you can configure the rules. So if you open this Explorer tab, uh, the first tab where you see the files, at the bottom, there is a SonarLint rules tab. 
it's not super handy, but that's what VS Code gives us. So you have the uh, list of rules here. And um, for them, and those rules uh, which are activated uh, have on, and those which are deactivated have off. So we have this default set of rules, which is running by default, and uh, which we expect will satisfy everybody. But for sure, you might want to um, disable something, for example, here we have like, okay, you don't need to create this variable, just directly return this rule or this uh, expression. So you might want to disable uh, the rule and you just can click it from here. Uh, also for each rule, you have a description. Uh, you can also access it from this uh, bulb. And you have here description of the rule and examples uh, of good and bad code. And uh, the last thing we're gonna do now is um, uh, is let's find in this list of the rules um, the rule about shorthand syntax. So here, this object literal shorthand syntax should be used. So uh, this rule uh, is not activated. You have off here. So um, let's say that I want to activate it, and we instantly have a new issue. So and here we can, instead of writing name, column name, we can just write name. And by the way, we have quick fixes just currently in the sprint. So we should have uh, quick fixes available here super soon. So um, here it is, the sonar lean. So we are done with the first, um, our first model. Uh, so we cloned the repo, we, uh, we installed Sonar Lint extension in the VS Code. Um, and we looked how we can enable, disable the rules, uh, how we can browse the issues, uh, etc. Okay, so I hope that everybody managed that to work. And um, now let's go to the uh, next step that will be, um, I believe, a bit more interesting, I hope. So um, in your slides, uh, you have a link to the Sonar Cloud. So this is a link to the login page. So you can use here this GitHub login. So you can simply click on here and you're logged in. So you will not see anything super interesting here because you have an empty account. But you can already, uh, there is a explore projects here on the right with this, I'm not sure how it's in English, uh, binocular um, icon. And in here, you can see the projects which are already analyzed on Sonar Cloud. Uh, there are some featured projects. And so you can get some kind of understanding what is it like. So you can filter by size, language. Uh, and uh, okay, there is a project name uh, filter. So this is uh, Sonar Cloud. So this is the platform uh, where you uh, track the quality uh, of your project. So it contains many things. So you get bugs, vulnerabilities, uh, maintainability issues, code smells, code coverage, duplications, plenty of metrics, the evolution with time. Um, and uh, many other great things. Uh, some of them we will consider today. But what we want to do now is, is to add uh, a new organization. So on this, we press on this uh, plus on the left right corner, oh, sorry, left top corner, and uh, we press and create new organization. 
So here we will press on this, uh, let's say default uh, option, which is suggested import an organization from GitHub because that's how we logged in. And um, you will be asked to which organization uh, you want to install. I have several, so I just pick my personal one. And here you will be asked uh, which repositories uh, you want to select. You can select all or only the one which we forked. I will select the one which we forked. So it is to do here. And I will install it. Okay, I need a password. And so here there is a key for the organization which is created. Uh, so the organization on Sonar Cloud is the same organization as you would have on GitHub. So where you can store the projects, um, configure them, share the configurations between the projects, etc. So I continue. So as I said, there is a free plan for the open source, uh, for sorry for public projects. So for these projects will be available to browse to everybody under this um, uh, binocular sign, or you can have paid, then it will be invisible. And it, uh, the price depends on the number of lines of code. So here we are, we have our organization. So this organization has only one member who is me and or you. Like, uh, but of course you can have the whole team under one organization and you can have uh, different uh, access rights, etc. So as soon as we have the organization, we can create the project uh, under it. So I pressed on this, uh, uh, or you can press on the plus, doesn't matter. So Sooner Cloud suggests me to add this. Uh, to do project. So I agree with it and pressing on setup button will automatically add the project to Sonar Cloud and trigger the first analysis. So now analysis is running. So that's uh, the first initial analysis of the project. Uh, it will take some time, I don't know, maybe a couple of minutes. So while I'm waiting, maybe guys, you can share um, where are you? I see that people have many questions. Tibor, I think you have more things to do than me. <laughs> oh, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, great. Um, okay, so I see somebody said that created, uh, Matthias created it, finished import. I have one bug. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. Uh, yeah. yeah, I did my best to put these bugs. Indeed, this project had so little code and it was done so nicely that it didn't have any bugs. So you can see here that it's me who committed it. And we did it like uh, yes today. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So. so um indeed. So now you see your project. Uh, if you open the main branch, you see the overview of the uh, of the things of the issues. So you can see the same issues which we overviewed um, in the Sonarlint. So this React import, commented code, uh, etc. Um, but we don't see the issue with the um, with the name shorthand shorthand the object property because this rule was activated only in uh, Sonar Lint, so it was local configuration. This configuration is not available on 
Sooner Cloud, so Cloud doesn't know about it. Um, but on Sooner Cloud, there is also a way to, uh, to configure your um, rule set. And that, um, that's where we stop at our second model and we change the um, slide. We go to the slide number eight and we will create a custom quality profile. So I hope everybody follows. Please don't hesitate to let me know if I should go slower or faster or whatever. So you guys should open now your organization, which by default probably has your name. And in, uh, in the organization on the top, you have quality profile. So quality profile, um, you see you have quality profile for each language. I think I didn't say that yet, but Sonar Cloud supports many languages. So you see here, so like probably almost every um, modern language and not even modern, we have uh, COBOL and uh, I don't know what else is, uh, ABAP. Yeah, ABAP is on the top. Um, those languages are supported by Sonar Cloud. And, uh, uh, and those profiles, all these profiles, they're called Sonar Way. So this is default profiles. This is the same profile you have on, on Sonar Lint. And uh, of course, if you want some adjusted profile, as we did on Sonar Lint, you should create your own one. So we click on the create button on the right top. And uh, we will have, a, I don't know, for example, DevOps, uh, Jazz, uh, I always spell it incorrectly, DevOps, Jazz, uh, Profile. We don't need ABAP, we need JavaScript. So I will find JavaScript in the list. And we need to pick Sonar Way as a parent because that will make it inherit all the rules there which is great for the start because you don't need to click all the rules you want, but you already have something by default. And this is also great because if in one month we add 10 more rules to the uh, platform, you will get those rules activated automatically. So I press create and here is my profile. So that's profile in the organization. That means that you can make it available for every project in your organization. And, and that makes it super good uh, in sharing the coding practices across the company or team. So um, currently uh, we see here that no projects are explicitly associated to this profile because by default, default profile is used. And uh, we can change this. And in the, all projects, we can pick our to-do project. And uh, now we see that this to-do project is using this profile. Or you can even on this uh, settings button here, you can set it as default. That means that every new project which you will add to the Sonar Cloud under this organization will use this profile. Okay, so I, I hope that was all good. Now, um, those two profiles, so uh, default profile and our DevOps JS profile are identical. And uh, you see here that here you see the inheritance, it's all the same. So let's uh, activate more rules. And in the, in the um, slide, you see the rule key, which I wanted us to activate. So it is JavaScript uh, 1066. So you can search by rule key or you can search by um, the title. It's in parentheses. So this is a rule about 
uh, two nested if statements, which you can easily refactor. So you can activate it from here or from the list here. So you activate it in the objects with some severity. And here we are. So now if we go into the profiles, uh, okay, need to go for, okay, here we are. So now we see that the WebJS profile has uh, one more rule. Uh, but um, if we go into our project, we still see the same number of issues. So we don't have new issues for this rule because Sonar Cloud got triggered the triggers the analysis only for each push. So let's go to the VS um, code. And for example, um, let's fix this uh, React um, import, or you can do whatever else, whatever else you want, it doesn't matter. We just need to uh, push something. And go to the repo. So, so we'll commit this um, import duplicate and I will push it. You can push with, uh, with VS code or with terminal, whatever you want. So you see now that uh, as soon as I push, there is a tab here that uh, analysis progress. It tells you that it's up to 30 minutes, but that's really like the top uh, because uh, there are sometimes big projects. But it should take, uh, you, you already know how much it will take. You already have one. Okay, so that's it. We have our results. So um, I will open the main branch that's handy for us now. And if you open code smell, uh, here is it. Here is our new issue merge test if statement on line 55 on this object. So this rule uh, was not in the full profile. You can go to the rule here and, uh, and see the description of the rule some recommendation how to fix the issue uh, and you can just close it. Here it is, so here we are. So we finished with this um, uh, profile configuring analysis rules. I congratulate you. If Tibor doesn't tell me that I need to wait or to repeat something. Uh, so, so there were people asking to slow down a bit, but I think should we should be good because we were waiting for analysis. So, mm -hmm. if if you still need to slow down, uh, please let us know in the in the chat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I see that indeed that's hard to switch the screens because you need to see what I'm doing and to do it yourself. I try my best to go slow. So uh, can so, uh, somebody write in the chat if they are uh, ready to continue? Lena, can you zoom in a bit? Zoom in, in the browser, you mean? Yes. Sure. Okay, should we? I think it's good. Yeah, good I, I already I already zoomed in the in VS code. So in here, so yeah, it should be better like this. Indeed. And I will also probably zoom in here to be a bit similar. Okay, so I saw somebody lost us some minutes ago. So this is for Alex. If you let us know where you are, we can try to help you. So the most important here is that you can skip the profile configuration. The most important to, to be able to continue is that you have the project. You have the project in Sonar Cloud.
Okay, so, nobody told said that they are ready, <laughs> which is a bit depressing. <laughs> we can we can maybe run the okay. poll. Okay, we can somebody. run the poll who 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 has the the project. <laughs> but I cannot I cannot create quick polls. Ah, okay, never mind. Yeah, that. yeah, unfortunately. Okay, I send the link. So there are there are at least two people who are ready, and the Rika we can't send the link because everybody should have his own project so you you, you should have your own link I, at least i'm not sure i understood the question i can send you the link to my project yeah but you should have your own because you have you should have rights to change it to be able to continue okay there are at least three people who are ready. <laughs> oh, that's not that's not bad <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay, there is somebody else. Great, great. Okay, let's wait for somebody, one more person at least. Um, I think that the recordings mm. are going to okay. be sent by email a bit later. So if, if you want to wait for the recording, I, I, I believe it, they, are, they are sent uh, a bit later and they are they are available on YouTube. Okay, so um, now we move back to Sonorlint to VS Code. Uh, and um, do, do you guys still see the transcript? I think I turned it off. Oh, okay. I think I turned it off, but I'm not sure how to turn it on again. Okay, if this is still required for somebody, please uh, ask for it. Now, um, here is the situation that you have your sonar link, you have sonar cloud. We activated one hole here, one hole there. So they're not in sync. That's not great for the user experience. And clearly you would like here to have the synchronization between the rule sets. That's where we can uh, have the connection between them. So to, to connect them, um, in fact, okay, first I wanted you to show that in this uh, line 55, uh, that we don't have this issue for the collapsible if statement because this rule is not in the default profile and it's activated only on Sonar Cloud. So now um, let's open the settings. So it's, um, so you can go to the code preferences settings and you have a hotkey here, which you can use for the future. So it's a command uh, comma for Mac users. And um, either you can search for Sonarlint and you will see here the properties available or you can just find it under extensions. Uh, so here you can set up connection to Sonar Cloud. Uh, first, you need this uh, property. So you can press edit in settings. And uh, here you'll see the, I'm not sure if everybody is aware of how settings for VS Code are working, but this is basically a JSON file, which is just nicely displayed. Um, so we already have here Sonar Lint configuration so you can also do it manually here if you want uh, but what we need now is that we need a sonar lint connected mode to sonar cloud so you can start typing this property and just uh, and so vs code should uh, suggest you the full property and you can just click it and um, and then you uh, should create the this, uh, you should pick the last one with the organization key and token. It's just that you should wrap it into array so that it's not complaining. So now we need to fill these two uh, properties here, organization key and token. For the organization key, you can click on your organization Sonar Cloud and you have your key on the right. Or maybe you just remember it from the moment you 
set it up. And for the token, it's a bit trickier. So uh, you can click on the link in the, um, in the slides. Or you can just uh, go directly from Sonar Cloud. You open your account, you click on your account uh, and you open security tab. So as you wish. So here you generate the token. So you put whatever name. So I will put DevOps, uh, Jazz, uh, Workshop, um, Sonarland. So now this uh, token appears at the bottom and I copy it and put it in my, in my VS code. So now we have this connection to the Sonar Cloud, but uh, we still need connection to the project. So that's on the next slide, uh, number 10. So we search for Sonar Lint connected mode project. And we pick this single one, single property project key. So to get the project key, we go to our project and um, you can find it under the information tab. And in fact, even organization key is here. Or you can also find it in the URL. So it's ID equal, and this is the project key. So here we are, we're almost there. So now uh, you need to, uh, to reload the extension. So I'm not sure if uh, reload. So I, I think the best way would be just to close the VS code and to reopen it again. Um, okay, that takes time. To have the proper startup for the um, for Sonar Lint. And tada, we have our uh, issue with the merge uh, of if statements available because for the analysis we used the profile from Sonar Cloud. Now I will show you one more trick. Um, I hope it will work. So when syncing the projects uh, between Sonar Cloud and Sonar uh, Lint, uh, the rule set is what we already uh, have looked at, but also what you might want to sync is the issues resolution. So uh, let's open our issues and okay, for, let's say that, okay, here is the commented out code issue. Uh, here it is in Sonarlint. And let's say I, I don't want to fix it. I think that's great that this code is commented here and that makes it uh, only better. So you can change the status of the issue. Resolve is won't fix. That means that you just don't want to fix it for whatever reason. So uh, I like this command and I want to keep it. So now this issue is not anymore open. You will not see it on your uh, overview page. So you see here it is 14 instead of 15. And, um, and also it's Sonarlint should be able to load this resolution and not display this issue anymore. But for that, you need to update the connection. And of course you can restart VS code that uh, will definitely work. But also you can, um, you should be able to uh, update the binding to the project. So for that, um, in the view, common palette, maybe you know the hotkey for common palette already, and you can update the binding. Uh, 
Uh, and everything disappears. Sometimes I need to edit the code to the um, to make the Summerlint trigger the issue. And nothing is working. Yeah, that's that happens when you want to show somebody something. Tick, tick, tick. Okay, guys, I will just, uh, you can just close and uh, open the VS code. Or try to reload Windows. So that's kind of a soft restart um, of the um, VS code. And it doesn't work as well. Sorry for that. Okay, let's then restart for the VS code. Okay, here we are. I'm sorry for that. Um, so, uh, and you see that we have uh, all other the issues, but this command is not underlined anymore because the status of the um, resolution of the issue was pulled from the solar cloud. So this way you don't need to leave any commands here like yes, lint, uh, I don't know what, ignore or whatever. Um, all those things are on the server and um, available on the solar cloud. So um, here it is, the connected mode of sonar lint to sonar cloud. You can the same way connect it to sonar cube, uh, and you will have the same setup for your um, ID as in the on your continuous integration. Okay, so we are done with the connected mode. And now will be the next step, which is, I believe, the most interesting and the most difficult one. So I want us to be ready for it. Um, it would be great if... People... Maybe I, I will just mention one thing because there was one interesting question. Uh, so basically the question was how you can configure SonarLint differently for different projects. And... Um using connected mode is actually a way to to do that because in the connected mode you you have a quality profile which you can define per project so if you are in mm. connected if you are in connected mode you can have different quality profile for for different projects so this is the way how you can have different configuration for different projects and also the advantage is that you can uh, share the configuration in the team. So Sonar Cloud can be a central place where you configure your clean thing, basically. Okay. Uh, but, and also, if you don't use connected mode uh, to have different configurations, so these are user settings, but it's also possible in VS Code to have um, workspace settings. So if you open this, there is a workspace. It's currently empty, but this is the same way you can configure it. So you see it's created in my project and you can commit it. And this will be specific to the project. Good. Okay, so did somebody say that uh, they have connected mode and sonar lint? Guys, could you please uh, give me some feedback on this? Or maybe you it didn't work for you and you need some help. Um, okay, I see somebody saying, okay, the job exception. So try to restart the VS code if it's not working. Uh, can I do the work on a little... Uh, uh, Daniel, could you write to Tibor, uh, not write directly to me? Of course, you can do whatever you want. Uh, you um, okay? Bjorn doesn't get output after we start. Uh, 
how I can disable the rule. So how to disable the rule, uh, if you have the issue, um, you press on here. Hmm, what is it now here? I used to have this here, guys. You saw this. Okay, so I think I'm missing something. So you can disable the rule in this menu. So you find the rule you need and you, you press on this um, on this cross to disable the rule. But also I think there was uh, the way to disable it from the issue, but it somehow disappeared. I have no idea what's going on. I will stop this code. Oh, uh, that's the wrong page. Oh my gosh, I'm too fast. Tibor, do you have any idea what, why Sonorin doesn't show the rule? Ah, because I'm in connected mode now, that's why. That's why, because I'm in, uh, as I'm in connected mode, uh, you cannot configure the rule set from SonarLint anymore. You should go to Sonar Cloud and configure it there. So if I uh, disable connected mode, I should be able to see it, to do it from here. Uh, okay, I see that Bjorn has some problems. Uh, no sonar lint and lines are created. Okay. Okay, so I didn't see anybody saying that they managed to have connected mode. That's not great. Uh, okay, somebody did. Uh, okay, perfect. Thank you, Jose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, my guess is in storm. Okay, we have one person. That's already great. Um, so now uh, let's go to the sonar cloud. So we are back in here. And you might see that we here don't have any coverage. So um, as we in the automatic analysis, which is done uh, by Sonar Cloud to have these issues, we don't execute tests there as for JavaScript, that's always, not always trivial and we don't have coverage. Um, that's not possible to have this coverage with the automatic analysis. But we're gonna have a GitHub action, which will run this for us, and we're gonna have a coverage uh, pretty soon. So uh, for that, let's go onto the administration tab. I will just mention one thing, that this part which we are starting now is independent from what we did until now, the connected mode. So it's related, but it doesn't really depend on it. So if you didn't manage to do connected mode, feel free to, to mm -hmm. continue what Lena will show now, because this is, independent so you don't need to have connected mode working so it's okay if it didn't work it didn't work but you can try to mm -hmm. to do to do the this uh, github action parts which with coverage right thank you for yes, mentioning this so i hope that people who uh, were who, uh, who did manage with sonar lint are still uh, motivated to continue with the uh, github actions so um, administration at the bottom left, uh, and here you have analysis method. So we have this sonar cloud automatic analysis on because that was the default when we were adding the project. And uh, let's turn it off because uh, we will not be using it anymore. And let's... Um, follow the tutorial on GitHub Actions. 
So again, cloud, so the cloud automatic analysis was would trigger uh, analysis on each push to the uh, branch or on pull request. So now we're going to create a GitHub action, um, which will basically do the same thing, but it will be there. We will be able to add more steps and we will be able to add uh, uh, test execution. So uh, first uh, you need to go to your GitHub repository. There is a link here. And you need to click here on the new repository secret. And you copy the value and name. So it will be sonar token. And it goes here. So just simple copy paste both values from this tutorial to the uh, these two fields. And that's added. Here it is. So now it's available. Uh, let's continue. I hope that works for everybody who is doing that. Now we need to create a built YAML file. So here it says create to update, but as we don't have any, we will create it. So you can copy the path. I think it will be even handier here. So uh, we have JavaScript, so you click on the right. Uh, then you can copy the path. And in the VS code from the root of the project, you can create on the new file and just insert it. VS code will automatically create all the directories which are required. So this is the uh, default location for GitHub actions. So GitHub will automatically know that, okay, this is the file I should um, treat as a GitHub action. And you can copy uh, this file here. So here you have everything um, to have the same setup, the same analysis as we used to have. So we now continue. And you need to create one more file, which will contain the configuration of the analysis. So this file called Sonar Project Properties, you also create it in the root. And you copy the content of it. Uh, you can drop all this uh, commented stuff. So um, it says you are done. In, and indeed, if we push this, we will have a analysis, but we will not have coverage. So in order to have the coverage, I will ask you to open the slides. OK, I'm a bit far. So here it is. So you please add these two lines to the solar project properties. So this will set the project version and this will set the location of the coverage report. So the coverage report should be in the ELCO format. Uh, in my project, we have here just uh, test executor and we use here the results processor just Sonar Reporter, which will convert to the LCOV. So it will already uh, generate it in the LCOV format. So we are almost there. Now we need to add the uh, more steps to the build YAML because we need to run the test. So we do it between these two steps, between the check out of the project and between the Sonar Cloud scan. Uh, be careful here because this indentation is important um, to the format. So these uh, dashes should be aligned uh, and uh, the width and uh, users, etc. they should be aligned. 
So we use here another fiction available, which uh, has yarn. Here we install dependencies and here we run uh, yarn test, which will generate coverage for us. Uh, okay, uh, Tibor, somebody is asking for the uh, link to the slides. I don't hear you, Tibor, you are muted. Sorry, I will share the link okay, again. Thank you. Okay, I will try to be slower. Sorry, guys. I just noticed that we already spent an hour, and uh, I will, that's why I was trying to be a bit faster. Okay, so um, so we have here, so we added so far two files, build YAML, which is the configuration of GitHub action and Sonar project properties. That's the uh, properties for the analysis. There is nothing fancy here. Project key, organization key, that's what we already saw with you on Sonar Insight. Project version, it's not required, but that will be useful for us a bit uh, in the next step and the uh, link to the, not link, uh, the re re relative path to the um, uh, report. So of course, this relative path should be there during the uh, CI step, not on your local. So as soon as you have, uh, if you, as you are ready with these two files, you can commit it to the master Set up Sonar Cloud Analysis. So now I'm ready to push. So as, and as soon as I will push, so, uh, GitHub will create GitHub action as uh, if you open the project now. Uh, okay, there are some GitHub actions uh, which are old, which I did like 20 hours ago when I was preparing but you probably have nothing there. And as soon as I will push, uh, you should have a new GitHub action running. And it doesn't appear, what's it? Okay, I'm sorry. I failed to push some refs to do. do, do. Uh, There's connection problem or what? Tibor, can you give me a hint what I'm doing wrong? Inter internal, internal server error, what the hell is that? Okay, I will, I will check uh, GitHub status. <laughs> it's unfortunate if it's... Uh... If, if the GitHub is done, uh, there is little we can do. Okay. So they are having some incident okay. on GitHub right now. That's unfortunate. <laughs> maybe, okay, that's maybe somebody managed to push. You, okay, I see that you, you're having this, okay. Okay, so sorry for this. This is a little bit outside of our control. Uh, we did a dry run with Lena two times. It should work. It, it, yeah, it works. <laughs> it works on my machine. Okay, uh, <laughs> maybe, I, I, maybe I hope it will be quickly fixed. So, uh, but uh, okay, maybe I can just show you how it would look like uh, as soon as you push, you're gonna uh, have here this, um, uh, an item appear in this, action stop and you're gonna have this sonar cloud here with these steps uh, which is first it builds the um, github actions uh, then it checkouts and so dependencies generates coverage report and scans uh, and excuse the scan of sonar cloud and so with these GitHub actions uh, analysis, you are able to see all the logs of the analysis. And if something goes wrong, you are able to see it. You see 
what is taken, how much time, etc. So um, maybe try it again. Maybe it will pass. Um, mm -mm. And uh, as soon as we have this um, set up, we will also. Uh, in fact, uh, it's already uh, here that uh, we see the sonar cloud analysis in this um, in GitHub. I wonder if I will be able. To uh, probably I cannot push anything right even on branch. Mm, that's it. And do, do, you, do you maybe have the, the project from when we did the dry run so you can at least show how it looks? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We, 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 maybe I, I have I, it. You have it, yeah. I will, tr I will, I'm, I'm gonna check. Maybe you can share. Me yeah, I right. will, I will just check if I have it. Yes. Okay, I well if you you can invite me to the to the organization maybe. Ah, okay, okay, let's do that. So I will invite Lena to my organization. Not working. Okay, I added you to, to my organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we didn't really try it or tested this, so we are improvising a bit. Yeah, so you will not you will not see uh, okay you will uh, you will see something like this after you will have this GitHub action executed, so you will see the coverage. Um, of your project. And uh, if you click on it, you will see the drop down on which files have which coverage. And you can open it and see the green lights, green lines which are covered, red lines which are not covered, um, etc. So this way you might uh, add not only coverage, but also, for example, import of external issues. If you're using some other tool to link your projects and you can add external issues. Um, so you can add in your GitHub action one more step on running your uh, Yeslin, for example, in here. And in the Sonar project properties, you can set this path to this, um, uh, yes, in the issues report. Uh, okay, so I see that guys, uh, people are writing that it's not working. So while it's not working, um, I will um, I will go to another uh, model about security hotspots. So uh, in the title of this uh, workshop, you see that it's not only about code quality, uh, but also about uh, security. So Sonar Cloud uh, provides you with, um, um, with many security uh, rules. Uh, for this project, we don't have any, uh, but we have two security hotspots. So I'm gonna share with you what is this. Um, so for security, it's not always uh, easy to say that you have a problem here, that you can you are vulnerable here. You can have some places which are dangerous and which require a manual review. So in our project, we have two security hotspots. So those security hotspots are not just simple issues uh, because you can uh, just review them manually and say that, okay, I just had a look, I understand what is it about and it's safe. So for each security hotspot, you have a description of it. Uh, you, you, uh, and you, um, there is a tab which, where you can read how you can understand if you are at risk. Uh, so if this is a really dangerous for you, and also you have a tab about how to fix this. 
So here I have a HTTP, not HTTPS, uh, protocol used for my URL. And I, uh, let's say that, okay, I reviewed it here. There is no danger for me to use uh, unsafe protocol. And I say that it is safe. So as soon as it is safe, uh, it will not be any more displayed. Um, um, so it will not be any more displayed in the, the security hotspots. And there is another one, security hotspot, where you create, where you load uh, the script from the internet, and you are not checking the integrity of it. Here, let's say I reviewed it, I read the description, I say that, okay, in fact, I'm at risk. It's an external uh, resource. I, I cannot be sure that this is um, what I expect there. And I have to put some integrity here. So I have here some examples. I should put a, a, a char number for this, um, uh, for this script in my code. So, uh, that's when I will, will need to fix this in my code. But that will also need me to push something. And I cannot still push, I believe. Please, please. No. So, OK, let's. Uh, I know that's not great. But unfortunately, I don't have a better idea. So let's pretend that I will be able to push. So in your code, you will open this security hotspot. So it's mine 111. I already prepared you with some with the fix. Um, so here you have the, the script.integrity, and here I have the function which uh, returns the integrity. And uh, I would push it normally and open APR and merge it. And, and then when it is merged, I, uh, I will say that, okay, this is fixed and I can change the status of this, uh, of this hotspot as fixed. I will, I will not do it in case this will eventually work so that we can really do that together. And here you see that we have a security hotspot status uh, being 50%. Uh, and this all impacts um, your, um, your quality, uh, quality of your project. Okay, so I think that there is not much I can demo anymore because that's, uh, that's all requires GitHub and it's not working. So it seems like our demo will, our workshop will be a bit shorter. And then I will, but maybe guys, you can do it yourself. So you have those uh, uh, slides and you, it tells you everything you should do. And um, uh, if you later you have some questions, you can, uh, you can write them. Tibor, can you remind me what's the name for the, this chat? Conference chat. Uh, Discord. Discord chat. So there is a question from Nicolas. Maybe you can try to answer that. Um, does SonarLint aim at replacing ESLint or, or Prettier, or is there a way to have a combined setup with all tools enabled at the same time? Uh... I would say we definitely do not aim to, to replace Prettier. I can like Prettier is doing something different and yeah, we, we try can, to avoid a stepping we, into the format. Yeah, so we, we usually we don't have rules about formatting. We have uh, a little, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we stopped adding them. Mm -hmm. And so and and definitely you can use Prettier to get Prettier together with uh, together with uh, SonarLint. There there is no problem and we, we do it all the time. And about ESLint, I would say that uh, we currently cannot replace it, mostly because for ESLint you have uh, thousands of uh, um, <clears throat> uh, like small packages providing rules for specific frameworks. 
So what SonarLint is able to detect in JavaScript, it's, let's say, um, vanilla JavaScript. There are some rules which are targeting specific things, but only uh, like the, the biggest frameworks like Angular, React, and such. So if you are using some small library and you, you want to have some ESLint rules for it, uh, you, you can use ESLint. And, and there is no issue to use ESLint and SonarLint together. So you can also like when you when you want to to have a ESLint issues in Sonar Cloud, for example, so they are shared in the team, and you benefit from all these like uh, pull request uh, stuff. You can create a report from ESLint and import uh, the report as external issue, as Lana mentioned already. Um, okay, I think that I will um, I will go to the next uh, part of our workshop. So it will be unfortunately it will be all let's say theoretical, um, but uh, that's uh, still interesting. So uh, when we are talking about Sonar Cloud, um, it's not only about checking your uh, your issues. This is um, let's say e, this is not so useful when you want to know um, about the status of your project if you want to release or deploy um, for example for that we have um, a notion of uh, quality gate quality gate shows you um, here it says like if it is deployable if it is releasable uh, quality gate is also configurable at the project, uh, sorry, at the organization level. There is a default sonar way quality gate. It contains of different conditions on coverage, on the number of issues, um, etc. You can have your own, of course. And uh, uh, when you have the quality gate green, that means that you are um, you are okay to go. If you have a thread, you should fix something. Here you see that for some reason we don't have our quality gate. Why so? Because in, in Sonar Cloud, quality gate concept goes together with the new code concept. It is computed only on new code. What does it mean new code? So this is, let's say, a recent code, the code on which you are focusing. Uh, you can um, uh, think of it maybe as a code which was introduced since latest release or the code which was added in the last month. Uh, there are different ways how to, um, to see it. So le let's, uh, you can, uh, now you can do this in fact. So in the um, uh, new code definition is not set for our project. So let's set it. You can press it right here on uh, quality gate or also administration new code is also available. So new code, um, let's set it as a previous version. And uh, that means that <clears throat> as soon as the version will change, uh, then the, we will see this um, uh, you see now this overview page changed because we have this uh, new code uh, period uh, set, but it's not yet computed because we didn't have yet the analysis. So in the, um, why is it so great to have new code? That means because it, that means you, you should not focus on your, uh, on all this, le not legacy, but all this depth you have uh, in your project. This is especially great in big projects with long history where you, you add them to Son Sonar Cloud and you have thousands of issues. And of course, it's not possible to fix them all. Or maybe that's possible, that, but that's not rewarding for developers. That's not, um, and that's not effective. And Focusing on new code, it's not only making sense uh, for maintaining, for making sure that the new features which you deliver are done nicely. Uh, 
uh, it also lets you, in fact, uh, fixing the uh, the overall code quality, because you know probably that um, most of the time developers not create new code, but they edit the existing one. That means as soon as you touch the existing code, there are some issues there, and that becomes a new code as soon as you co edit it, and you. Uh, will uh, fix those issues as they start to be in a new code period. In the in Sonar Cloud, uh, you have on the right top the help uh, with documentation, and here you also have core concepts. So, um, so we have these core concepts here, and. Um, here you can uh, go through these um, uh, explanations about a new code. Maybe they are a bit better than I just explained. Uh, but I hope that's, that's clear for you. For pull request, uh, that's a bit different. For pull request, the new code is everything you edit in this pull request. So here, let's say uh, you when you your the quality gate for the pull request will pass if there is no issues on the code in this pull request, not since the latest version. And passing quality gate, of course, it's not about deploying or releasing; it's about merging the pull request to the master. Uh, so I, I wonder if it's all it's still red. Oh, guys, it's working. Tada! Can somebody confirm that they managed to push? Yay! Pull great. So uh, now let's go to the GitHub. We don't have much time, but I believe we are nearly there. So in actions, now we see this action running. So here we have commit uh, title and inside we have the sonar cloud and it's executing. So that's gonna take a couple of minutes. And uh, now we're in my project here. You see that we don't have coverage yet. So that coverage which I was showing you with was <clears throat> An old project from Tibur. So we need uh, to wait for it. And um, while we are waiting for it, I will uh, ask you to do another thing. <clears throat> so uh, please um, uh, do this uh, fix for the security hotspot. So uncomment the code around uh, line 103, 105, and 113. And um, don't just push it to master, but create a branch. So git checkout branch uh, fix hotspot. So we need this to, to be able to create a pull request. So I'm going to push it. Now it's when you're going to create a pull request, please be very, very careful. Don't rush to know to create pull request on the on your own project, not on the forked project. So when you press and create pull request, please here pick the your own repository not my repository because you will not be able to run some cloud on your on another repo so we create the repos create a pull request on the own repository on your own um, on your own repository so 
So, okay, we have Sonar Cloud done. We have our coverage here. Uh, okay, there is no history yet, but uh, of course, when you have more analysis, you're gonna see the trend here about the, the project. And you have on your main branch, you have quality gate green now. You see that everything is zero here because uh, we don't have any new code. So everything which is part of the initial analysis, this is, let's say, your previous life. You start from the new uh, page and everything is zero. It's not great that coverage is zero though, but um, okay, we didn't cover that line. But uh, quality gate is, is green even with coverage, which, which is zero because it's really a little number of lines here. So um, now uh, we are done with the um, GitHub analysis, uh, sorry, GitHub action analysis. Now let's go back to the pull request. So I created my pull request, but I don't, why I don't have it analysis? Mm -hmm. Tibor, can you give me a hand? Why I don't have analysis on pull request? I have it on must. No, no not sure. <laughs> really, I don't know. I, I'm not sure uh, GitHub is functioning on mm -hmm. 100%. So it could be dead. Can you can you open the actions if if it no. run the action? Oh no, it's not. I I think GitHub is simply not working as, as it should. And did you see that they are still con reporting they are done? Okay, they're still done. Okay, so uh, then uh, let me again tell you how it should look like. That's a bit <laughs> not great, but uh, um, as we have a GitHub version set up, it should trigger the analysis for pull request. And um, you will see the, the command left by Sonar Cloud with the uh, quality gate and with the issues which are reported on this pull request. And maybe some of you noticed that there is a bug here. Uh, we, here we have the function which does not return anything. Here we get in the value of this um, function. And so uh, in a perfect world where you have Sonar Cloud working, on GitHub, you will not be able to merge this pull request until, um, okay, that in fact, that depends on your settings of your project, but uh, this button will not be green for the merge as you will have one issue on your project. Okay, I feel a bit stupid to explain you all this and not be able to show it. Uh, okay, here it is, it started. It started and uh, soon we're gonna be able to see this, what I just explained. By the way, I just checked that 16 people forked your repo, no? so mm -hmm. that's really cool. 16 or 60? 16. 16, mm. there were more people uh, claiming that they're gonna do the, <laughs> so, on, even on the first step. <laughs> Okay, so um, this action is running already for one. Okay, for one minute, so one minute more and we're gonna have the result here. And it's not that you see this result over here, you also see the pull request uh, on your um, Sonar Cloud. So here you see there is nothing here. I didn't even know about this animation, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, so as soon as you uh, have the analysis ready, it's gonna appear here, but here we have already one bridge, okay, that's master. And, um, 
I believe we are almost there. So, um, so what's gonna happen next is that we're gonna get this um, build, uh, uh, we're gonna get this analysis and we're gonna get that back. Uh, then we're gonna fix it. We're gonna put return and here you can already maybe <clears throat> do it. So we put return in here so that the value is used here is not undefined. Is, uh, return, return, return. I will not push it to not uh, break this analysis. I'm not sure how they override each other. Okay, here we are. So, uh, so here is our bug. So I can click on it. See here on Sonar Cloud that okay, I'm using the output of this function which doesn't return anything. And if I open the PR, you see that I can still merge. This is configurable that you can even forbid merging, but it's not green, so you should do something. So I'm gonna push this fix to the to the branch, and that uh, should uh, trigger the new analysis. Okay, that will probably again take some time. And um, the last thing which we didn't do. Uh, I'm sorry, we're we're a bit late but that's unfortunate that uh, github was down so um on your local project uh let's go to the master we will not uh, spend time creating pull requests uh, just to to see the fact so um you have here two files new file and new file test so it has just some code um, so that we see new code in action. So you have some tests, you can comment all that. And um, let's commit it directly to the master. Ah, uh, guys, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's not, it's not it, I forgot uh, to tell you that you changed the version because yeah i wanted this to be like imitating the new new iteration in development so change version in your project properties to the zero two in this sonar project properties and uncomment these two files and uh, let's push it How is it going in an hour? Uh, no pull request. Okay, it's still not triggered. The second, the second commit. Yeah, probably even master will not be so quick to get. In fact, no, master is working, at least for me. I'm not sure how is it for you? So people are asking uh, if you can repeat again what you changed in uh, the Sonar Project Properties file. I changed 01 to 02. Okay, so the new code is defined by the by the version. By this number, yeah. Yeah, so, by the number. So uh, this will be this commit which where we change this version will be this first uh, analysis in the new new code period. And um, then pull request. Okay, so pull request also started. Sorry, guys, to do this in parallel. So the idea, initial idea, was to do that uh, one by one, uh, but to speed up a bit. 
uh, I'm doing that in parallel. So we have this pull request analysis running and in parallel we have our master new code, new, new code, uh, new version analysis um, running. So I'll open my project. And, as, uh, and probably you notice as soon as we have the, set up this new code period, we have these two tabs available. You are focusing on new code only, but of course you are able to see overall. Of course, for security, you might want to fix securities even if they are in old code. For security hotspots, that might be the same. Um, okay, so we have our analysis ready. Um, so since 12 minutes ago, I believe that's the timestamp of the commit. And so here it is, our um, new code uh, with a coverage of 50%. Uh, you see that coverage is too low, it's less than 80%. That's the default threshold, which makes the quality gate fail. We have two code smells. Um, so here in our this code, which we uncommented, we have here this uh, variable signed two times in a row. And here we have this uh, temporary variable created for no use. And so here you see this coverage with uh, this condition, which is only covered on one on one branch. So, uh, so here it is with the new code, what I wanted to share with you. With the um, pull request, we are still waiting. Okay, so here it is. So for me, it's uh, finished. Uh, so you see now that we fixed the bug, the quality gate passed, green the merge button is green, and I am able to merge. Okay, I will not merge, I will... Uh, So, um, okay, I also wanted to show you that you can see the pull request in here. So here it is. And um, I believe that's it. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that somebody at least managed to do everything. Um, okay, there was a question from Matthias, but I believe that, okay, Matthias said, okay. Uh, can somebody say if uh, they managed to reach the end? They managed to have this 50% um, uh, coverage on a new code and failed uh, quality gate on new code. Oh. Yay, great. <laughs> Nicola, you get a medal from us. We can send you a t-shirt, in fact. You can write, uh, you can write us and... Uh, you, it would be great if you can send us uh, your email to Tibor maybe, and uh, we will send you a t-shirt. Uh, Matthias said that he's still running. We should have said that in the beginning, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you live in Brazil, okay. No, no, no that's Matthias. Ah, oh, that's Matthias. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I think we can send a t-shirt to Brazil. I mean. Brazil, you need t-shirts, right? That you want there. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, <laughs> winter is they, they are ah, the, you're in the autumn autumn is starting mm. in Brazil, I believe. Mm. It probably also depends where Maybe I, I, sweet shorts, I mean uh... Brazil is huge. <laughs> okay, so uh Nicola, thank you very much for uh for managing that. Even uh, the, so, the rest of uh, people we still have um, uh, pretty many. So, thirty people are still uh, here. So, I hope those people still enjoyed this workshop and you learned uh, new things. I wanted to disclaim that uh, this is just one way to use it, right? This is just GitHub, GitHub Actions, uh, JavaScript. Sonar Cloud supports many languages, many uh, platforms, CI platforms, uh, co um, revision, code revision uh, platforms. So I believed everything, almost everything uh, which is 
currently available on the market should be possible to uh, to have analyzed on solar cloud. Okay, we have one more person almost there. Great. Uh, so I in the slides you have the uh, the Twitter of Sonar Source. So if you want to to follow it, to follow the news, and uh, there is a link to community uh, Sonar Source community. You can if something is not working for you, if you need some help, you can start a thread there. And our developers, me personally, Tibor personally, we are. Uh, checking them regularly and answering, or maybe somebody else from the company or from the community will be able to answer you. And um, I believe that's it. That was a bit unfortunate to have this GitHub down, but overall, I think that went pretty well. On my side, that was a nice time to spend the evening. So if you guys have any questions, I believe that's the moment to ask them. For your information, there will be another talk from the uh, Sonar in the DevOps JS. Um, it will be a lightning talk about um, our ecosystem. Uh, I'm not sure when it is, but I think that uh, you can easily find it. So um, then I think that, uh, yes, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Thanks and again. Yeah, thank you, Tibor, for supporting me. I think yeah, you did a great job in uh, writing in the in the chat and answering people. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Miki. Thank you, Heini, and uh, everybody, everybody who's here. I'm I'm super happy that so many people survived until the end. Uh, that's great. Okay, th thank you. And I wish, uh, yeah, recording will, uh, recording will be shared, definitely. You will get an email from the organizers of the conference. I'm not sure when exactly, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, but definitely this week you're gonna get a recording. I think it might be after the conference. So I think it will be next week probably, but uh, not sure, we will ask. Okay, we will ask, but we will not be able to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you will get it don't uh yeah uh it it will be it will be sent by you will receive the link on the email you used for registration yep you will get an email and uh maybe even i will be able to send these slides uh, so that you get the slides uh, together with the with this email also i believe uh, we have a YouTube channel at Sonar, so I think we, we also share these kind of things on our site, so you can check uh, sonarsource.com or the community forum, the community sonarsource.com. I think we we share the, these kind of things there, but you should get an email anyway. Okay. Okay, have a nice evening, everybody. Okay, maybe for people who in Brazil, that's not evening, but you have the whole day in front of you. So enjoy uh, the day. Thanks, and thanks, Elena. Thanks, Tibor. Thank you. It was and wonderful presentation. <laughs> thank you for the feedback. And uh, yeah, maybe see you next time. Bye bye. Enjoy Sonar uh, products. Goodbye. <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs>